Stainless steel is one of those materials that's slightly beyond what one would consider practical or sane to machine on a desktop CNC, but it is possible. We've already shown that by using conservative adaptive toolpaths you can machine tool steel and 303 stainless steel on the Nomad. Today, let's see if we can do the same on a stock shape Oko 3. Let me first whip up a quick nonsensical doodad to machine. People will occasionally ask if you can machine RC wheel hubs or model train wheels, and technically you can, which is where I'm drawing inspiration for this design from. It's half sports car, half train wheel. It's, it's a sports train wheel. But silliness aside, I do need to provide this disclaimer. A desktop CNC will not beat a lathe for making perfectly round parts. If you want wheels that roll smoothly, especially at high RPM, don't make them on a CNC. You can machine spokes on a CNC, but I strongly recommend that you let a lathe establish the outer diameter of any wheel. With that being said, since I don't intend for this wheel to ever roll, I can do whatever I want. This is all cosmetic. My only constraint is that all of the gaps between the spokes need to be large enough to fit at least a 1 16th inch end mill. I have a couple of these roughly 45mm square blanks of 303 to experiment with, so I'll clamp one of them down to my Shapeoko's wasteboard using the threaded inserts I installed. Now, in terms of toolpathing, adaptive toolpaths should really be your primary roughing method. I'm using some 2D pockets and contours here as well, but only for finishing. My adaptive speeds and feeds are as follows. Using a 332nd inch 4 flute Alton coated end mill, 15,000 RPM. That nets you a rotational speed of 368 surface feet per minute. For stainless steel, the safest place to be is under 400 SFM. You could use an 8th inch end mill at about 10 to 12,000 RPM, but I like smaller diameter end mills here because it makes the limiting factor more about the tool than the machine. I'd rather take a lot of little cuts per second than fewer larger cuts. 24 inches per minute, that works out to a chip load of about 4 tenths per tooth. 24 thou depth of cut, 8 thou optimal load. I'm leaving 10 thou of radial stock to leave and 5 thou in axial. Next, I'll take a couple finishing passes with the 332nd inch end mill, but I will eventually need to switch to a 16th inch 4 flute Alton end mill to get between the narrower gaps in the spokes. I'm using 18,000 RPM here, still leaning heavily on adaptive toolpaths. 16 inch per minute feed rate, 20 thou step down, 8 thou optimal load. I'll use rest machining to sharpen up these internal corners and finish cleaning up the inside of my wheel. Now, in order to machine the outside of my wheel, I'm going to have to swap work holding methods. When I first placed my stock and set my origin, I deliberately centered it over a threaded insert. This means I can directly bolt my sports train wheel to the wasteboard and remove the clamps. Now I can run an adaptive clearing toolpath around the outside of my wheel and make it round. I'm using a patch here to cover up the already machined area so the toolpath doesn't want to cut in the middle. A couple contours to clean up the little flanges and the perimeter, and we are done. Total machining time is a little under 3 hours. If you have an HTZ or don't care as much about the surface finish, you could definitely push a little bit faster. But the bottom line here is that technically, there's nothing stopping you from machining stainless steel on a Shapeoko. 15 or even 18,000 RPM will not burn up your end mills if they're small diameter tools. There are speeds and feeds that will work, they're usually just a bit more time consuming. So if you do need to mill a little bit of stainless steel in a pinch, now you know how. I hope you found this video interesting. If you did, give it the old thumbs up down below. It helps keep me employed. Good luck and have fun machining, folks.